guilty about. And basically the ego says, you've got it. You're, you're guilty in the past. There's no doubt about that. Now, it says, and the present is just a gateway to the future. You've been guilty in the past. You can't do anything about it in the present, and you're going to be guilty in the future. Hell. <laughs> Hell awaits you in the future. A fearful world awaits you in the future. So that, that linear thing of time basically says that you'll pay in the future for the, for the sins that you've committed in the past. More subtle realm, this is where sometimes I get into talking about pleasure and pain, is because both pleasure and pain reinforce that the body is real. When this is the sneaky trap about pleasure is that the ego says, didn't you like that? Think back to that experience in the past okay, whatever it was that you associate your mind with that was pleasurable. It can be anything. Think of a real pleasurable event. Now, don't you want to repeat that event in the future? You know, that's the ego. That's how the ego makes linear time continue. It says you had pleasure in the past, and if you do such and such and such and such, you can repeat that in the future. And that's how linear time continues to be kept, keep going, is that the mind still believes that there was something valuable in the past that it wants to repeat and strive for in the future. And, and by doing so, it keeps linear time going. And so that's, I mean, that's how that, you know, we talk about sometimes the idea that pain and pleasure are just two sides of one coin, where Jesus says it is impossible to seek for pleasure without finding pain. That's a, the ego does not want that idea from the Course brought into awareness. You can see, you know, you, you may even feel the resistance in yourself right now <laughs> starting to come up because that, that's an idea that is very important to maintaining linear time. And it's very important that the mind not see that connection between that. It's one of those things that, you know, the, the deeper you go into the Course, you start to see. That's the, have any of you read in the Course the term the attraction to guilt? On the surface, that seems ludicrous. Attraction to guilt? Why do I want to be attracted to guilt? Guilt's what I want to give up. And yet Jesus, why does he spend so many pages of his text talking about the attraction to guilt? That when the mind's in a deceived state, it actually is attracted to guilt. You know, it actually wants to, to use it to perpetuate itself. In this world, it's pursuing pleasure and avoiding pain, right? That's what it, it means to have a pretty good judgment, <laughs> is to know the things that are that are good and, and pursue those and avoid the things that are painful. And what the Course is basically saying is, my little child, your mind is very twisted, you have a lot of darkness in it, and you can't even tell the difference between the two. That there is this thing called joy that, is, that has nothing to do with, with anything that's physical. It's, it's completely intrinsic. It kind of wells up from within your heart. And, and your joy comes from fulfilling your function. That when you're listening to the Holy Spirit and you're being truly helpful, you will feel a joy that is so intense and so indescribable that you will be doing, literally, it's like doing your Father's will, it is indescribable happiness. That, that those other things that seem to bring you, you know, those little bits of pleasure and those little bits of fleeting things that you grasp for in the world will, like, will fade from your awareness because that joy will just like expand. Now that I can go for. I, I mean, if you just take the first part of the equation about pleasure and pain, it's like, hey, what's in it for me? <laughs> kind of. When you say joy is in it for me, then that's, that's what we're moving toward. That's, that's the positive experience. Also, I think the thing is, if you, if you really think you know what pleasure is, and you really are sure that you've experienced it, and you have something in mind that you want to repeat to get that back, whether it's robbing a bank or whatever, there's deprivation involved in the interval between now and the time I can get it. You know, maybe you like to drink, and, and there's a certain kind of uh, drink or beer or soda, and you are just thinking about it as you're going down the street to the cake, you know, to the pub. Your mouth starts Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a sense of deprivation and lack until, you know, like that old Prescott commercial, you know, fills your thirst and then blow it away, you know. That was the old thing. But you can see there's, there's a deprivation or there's a lack involved until that external thing, that sensation, you know, will be satiated. But I think the most common one that we can talk about, it seems, is, well, let's, let's talk about sex. Uh, this is the one that I've, I've heard myself say, well, that's pleasurable. Well, this old boy just go for a little pain, you know. And it, it completely 
blocks my mind. Absolutely. And as I have been able to, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's the very seeking of the pleasure using this body. Get it down real simple. We get away from sex a minute. I'm a hot candy eater. I love to eat hot candy. Why? I'm sitting here. I bit my lips. They're burning. You know? Uh, all I can feel is pain. Why? This is a little ego gimmick. If I'm feeling pain, I cannot feel peace. This is the great deceiver. I used to wonder why I hit my finger. Uh, what's that got to do with me feeling separated from, from God? Uh, couldn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, it does. It has a lot to do with it. This is part of the ego smoke screen for me. Any time that I'm not honed in on perfect peace, this, this peace that I have just recently discovered, if I can hone in on peace when I get up in the morning, and that's my function during the day, I pick up a piece of hot candy and eat it, I've lost my function. I don't... It, this seems ridiculous. But I do not home in on peace while my mouth is burning. I do not. If I hit my finger with a hammer, maybe I'm not peaceful. Why? Here it is. We're stepping right back in the trap. If, if I decide, man, I'm going to go for the pleasure and go for the sex act, and, and out of marriage or whatever, if you want to add to this, you don't have to add to it. Either way, you, either way you approach it, if, if I use this body in any way, seeking pleasure through the body, that's completely different than seeking joy, seeking peace. But, but I have to get away from the body, and it's, uh, it's a marvelous thing for me. It just happened to me. It's, I'll just say that that's kind of what I've found with it. It doesn't matter if it's pleasure or pain or sex or security. It's all seeking. You know, it's project and pursuit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just chasing my own care. Mm -hmm. you know, We're not just talking necessarily physical pleasure because some people get, will say, just seeing a sunset. Enlightenment. Yeah, or enlightenment can be I, I can't do it, you know, if I'm chasing it. You know, not human doings were being done. Yeah. It's like where do we where do we think we can find it? Like you were saying before, you really do believe that people are really just seeking happiness. And what I see the course is doing is saying, seek not outside yourself. If you're looking on the screen, I mean you it says you have the right to happiness. That's your that's your inheritance. You have every right to ask for happiness. But it's like, here's your direction. Now the course is saying, <laughs> you know, it's within you that it's the Holy Spirit's purpose. And, and to me, when Pat was talking about the pleasure pain thing, I mean, let's face it, in this world, pleasure and pain seem to be very different. I mean, they, experientially, they seem to be very different. So what makes them single or unified? And basically, Jesus says that two things that share a purpose, that's what makes them the same. So how do pleasure and pain share a purpose? They both reinforce the body as being real. I mean, it's the same thing about whenever, whether you're in ecstasy of something, of eating something that you love, or... You're, you've got a throbbing headache. You know, is God in your awareness? You know, with, with one extreme or the other. You know, that's the thing.